We have the story of a Russian mobster turned FBI informant turned Floridian playboy now accused of aiding in the murder of a rap star. What sounds like a pulp novel plot is a startling piece of unraveling nonfiction, complete with fast cars and violence and backroom deals. And here to tell it, ABC's chief investigative correspondent, Brian Ross. This is a story about a murder. The murder of an Atlanta rapper called Lil Fat. I turned it in assassination. And about a high living former Russian mobster turned FBI informant. 85,000. Manny Shupaya. Accused in the murder of Lil Fat, something he strongly denies. There is no reason to be afraid of me. I'm the nicest guy you'll ever meet. And about the FBI agent in the Atlanta office who was Shapaya's handler, Dante Jackson, now under investigation by the FBI itself after allegations he obstructed the murder case while receiving extravagant gifts from his informant. It's nice to have an FBI agent that's looking over your shoulder, I guess. Our ABC News Nightline investigation into all this began months ago in Fort Lauderdale, a place where people come to have fun and where a party van cruising down A1A seemed to fit right in, which is why we chose to use it. There he goes, there he is. As the perfect cover for an undercover yeah. camera surveillance team yeah. to get footage of Shapayev, a 35-year-old Soviet emigre who we were told was involved in a huge criminal operation man with a well-documented record of ruthless violence as a Russian mafia boss in New York. Beat up people, had terrorist mindset, threatening, extorting, kidnapping, muggings, torturing people. New York lawyer Ben Brathman came to know Shapayev well when he cross-examined him about his crimes. How bad was he? On a scale of 1 to 10, probably 100 pimping uh, young women who were kept captive and threatening to kill their families in the Soviet Union if they didn't work as prostitutes. You name the crime, you know, he did it. For all his criminal convictions, Shapayev could be serving life in prison or at least deported to Russia, but he is not. Instead, we found him leading a life of luxury and fancy cars in South Florida. One day in a red Ferrari, the next day a silver Mercedes, the next a top-of-the-line Range Rover. All thanks to the FBI and federal prosecutors, who again and again have protected him and kept him on the street as an informant and government witness. He's very smart. He's managed to play the system for years and years. I need these people out of here right now. They've been and as we found when we first approached him, Manny Shupayev is not someone who likes to be challenged. We're from ABC News. We I don't care where you're from. We better get the out of here. You know the allegations against you, sir. I don't care about that. Well, he hasn't changed much. I don't answer to you. I answer to a judge no, and a lawyer. Yeah. The same arrargance, the uh, same case, tough guy. You need to get the out of my property right now. We want to ask you. But just a few weeks later, we saw the other side of Shapayev, as he invited us back for a spin around town in a black Maserati and some spin on what an honest fellow he has become. My father maybe thought that I would grow up to be a nice Jewish boy. Maybe <laughs> one day, I don't know. He had hopes. Amidst almost $2 million worth of luxury cars, including a half million dollar Rolls Royce, Shapayev set out to try to talk his way out of his latest troubles and allegations. That protected by the FBI, he had returned to his violent criminal ways. How can we rely on anything you're saying? How can you rely? Because I'm saying it, because I stand behind what I say. But you have lied a lot. I have lied to the government, yes. I mean, were you a thug? Is that fair to say? No, I wasn't a thug. I was just not afraid. It's two different things. Zhapalyev came to the United States in 1989 as a 12-year-old. 16 years old, I had my first Mercedes Benz, so, you know, I went to school just to show off, not to, you know, not to study. And by his own later admission in a National Geographic documentary, the teenage hoodlum quickly became a major organized crime terror in New York ultimately making millions of dollars. Just so I have my background straight, what yeah. have you been convicted of? I was convicted of, you know, running a, uh, you know, being in an organized crime group back in the days. Arson? Arson. Kidnapping? Kidnapping. Extortion? To be exact, conspiracy to all that. 
Fire marshals are investigating a fire. Convicted as one of the men behind the arson that destroyed this huge supermarket. This morning it went to three alarms. But to avoid a long prison term or deportation, Shapoyev quickly made a deal to cooperate with the government and the FBI and rat out his partners in crime. You were convicted of crimes that could have put you in prison for life. Yes. Could have led to your deportation. Yes. None of that happened. Yes, of course none of that happened because Why? I cooperated. You took the FBI's way out? I took my way out, yes. At the time, the FBI and federal prosecutors said Zhapayev was one of the most important witnesses ever against the Russian mob. We see the wording? Yeah. Now, despite his tattoo, the FBI informant says he does have one regret. Given your background, did it bother you to be known as a snitch, as a rat? Of course. It still bothers me. But you are. Till this day. But it worked. After his testimony, he was set free, moved to Atlanta, and promised protection by the FBI. That was 2002. Who was the Atlanta man hiding these stolen cars? Just his three years later, Zhapayev was back David to his criminal out. ways. Caught in a luxury stolen car ring, operating in Georgia, South Carolina, and Ohio. Zhapayev was arrested, convicted, but served less than three years because he agreed to testify against others in the stolen car ring. How many strikes do you think you, you deserve? I deserved one strike. Well, you got one strike and then you got a second strike. Okay. So That's I got strikes. lucky. That was 2005. Yeah. Fast forward to this year and again allegations. It's the same old story with Zhapayev. Back to his criminal ways, selling stolen cars and worse with victims saying he was still being protected by the government. He's just, he's, he's untouchable. January One of the many alleged victims we heard about, cars. Travis Jones and his wife Elizabeth, say Shapayev cheated them by selling them a stolen car. Not only was Jones briefly taken into custody for driving a stolen car, but he's out the $10,000 cash he says he gave Shapayev. You can't drive it. No. But when Jones filed a police report in his hometown of Roswell, Georgia, he says he was told by local police that their hands were tied, that the FBI was protecting Shapayev. They told me that um, he is involved with other agencies and that they're using him right now and that they, he can't be arrested. So he's being protected? Correct. I want to talk to you about some of your car deals, sir. I don't know what you want to talk about. There's no comments. And in fact, when the ABC station in Atlanta, WSB-TV, did a story about Chapayev and the alleged stolen car ring earlier this year, reporter Jim Strickland says he got an unusual call from the FBI in Atlanta just a half hour after this confrontation with Chapayev at his business. I've been doing this 32 years. It's never happened before. It's got to tell you something. What does it tell you? It tells me that Manny was interwoven with the FBI in Atlanta deeply enough so that he can make one phone call and they're instantly calling me to find out exactly what the story is. And it turns out that the story is that a criminal the FBI twice helped keep out of prison is now accused of felony murder, something we learned only after this interview. You were a serious criminal connected to the Russian organized crime. You testified for the FBI. They put you back on the street and you broke the law again. That's the record. Okay, so what's the point? The point is, you have criminal ways that don't seem to go away. That's not true. That's not true. I'm just smarter than you, and that's it. I'm an average guy that thinks ahead. And that's what it is. And people can't stand that. Stupid people can't stand that. Smart people, they work with me. But as we saw, and they're going in. They're heavily going armed in. federal agents and police swarmed into his Florida business. Shapayev may not be quite as smart as he thinks he is. If you saw his Maserati speed by you on the streets of South Florida, you might think that Manny Chilpayev may be a music producer, uh, perhaps a well-heeled hedge fund magnate. Only the most cynical among us, or maybe staunch movie fans, would suspect he's an infamous criminal accused of conspiring to kill a rap star. We now return to ABC's chief investigative correspondent, Brian Ross, in a case that is truly stranger than fiction. As we roared around Fort Lauderdale in a black Maserati, the man behind the wheel, Manny Shupayev, was doing all he could to persuade me he was no longer a ruthless Russian mobster protected by the FBI. You know, don't just go slander somebody just because of my past. Don't use my past as your wild card, you know what I mean? And back at his luxury car business, Shapoyev denied he was dealing in stolen cars or doing anything illegal. 
Can you sit here now and say you're not involved in any ongoing criminal yes, activity? Yes, most definitely. Nothing whatsoever? Nothing whatsoever, most definitely. But only a few they're weeks later, and they're going in. They're heavily armed police and federal agents raided Chapayev's operation and took him into custody. He is now indicted by a grand jury in Georgia, along with four other men, on charges of murder, felony murder, and street gang activity. In possession of a firearm by a convicted felon. The murder victim was Melvin Vernell, popular Atlanta rapper using the name Lil Fat. Lil Fat was murdered in June of last year outside the hospital where his fiancée was about to give birth. He was shot multiple times next to his car uh, in the parking deck. Authorities contend that at the same time Shapayev was serving as an informant for the FBI, he helped arrange the murder of the rapper by tracking the victim's vehicle for the accused trigger bend with a GPS device. This defendant actually tracked the vehicle on over 11 occasions and provided that tracking information to the other two defendants who ultimately killed and shot the victim there at the hospital. In court last week in Atlanta, Shapayev's lawyer, George Plamides, said his client was not involved in the murder and that as an FBI informant, he had kept his FBI agent and handler fully informed. Everything goes through the handler. Okay? And so basically the handler delivered Manny to the FBI headquarters and he debriefed him and he told him everything that he knew about the tracking devices. But then the prosecutor said, in fact, Shapayev had essentially conned the FBI by lying about his involvement to his handler. And he went into the FBI on July 30th of 2012, some six weeks after our victim was murdered, and he lied to the FBI. He lied to federal agents. He did not cooperate with the state. And the evidence will show that he has done nothing but lie about his involvement in this murder. So it's simply not true that he is a cooperating witness with the FBI or the state when it comes to this matter. And adding to the intrigue, according to Georgia authorities and the lawyer, is the role of the FBI agent who was Shapayev's handler. Shapayev's lawyer says the agent asked for lavish gifts and cash from Shapayev and then tried to block local detectives investigating Shapayev in the murder case. So the FBI agent was obstructing the investigation of a murder? That's my opinion, and that is of uh, Manny's as well. According to the lawyer, the FBI agent asked for the best tickets to see the Miami Heat basketball team play. Oh, what a great play by Wade! And also asked, says the lawyer, for expensive watches, the use of luxury cars, VIP entrance to exclusive nightclubs, even $3,500 in cash. He gave him cash? Yes. He gave him uh, hotel rooms? Yes. Jewelry? Yes. Watches? Yes. Fancy cars? A at least $100,000 cars, at least. For the use of the FBI agent? Yes. And it was uh, under the assurance that they were for lawful law enforcement practices. FBI officials say they are taking the allegations against its agent very seriously. The Department of Justice Inspector General and the FBI's own Inspection Division are both investigating, according to what officials told ABC News in this statement. Be assured that the FBI holds every one of our 36,000 employees to the highest standards, and when an allegation of misconduct arises, it is taken seriously and addressed, the statement reads. It would hardly be the first time an FBI agent and an informant have been accused of crossing the strict legal lines. Most prominently, Boston mob boss Whitey Bulger, accused of giving gifts to FBI agents for years as they looked the other way when he allegedly killed rivals. Yeah, but that's part of the criminal justice system. You know, there are thousands of people in the witness protection program who were very serious criminals, and now they have new identities and they have new jobs, and many of them turn their lives around. But the bad part is, on occasion, it doesn't work. I knew that Manny Shulpayev would be out on the street after the cases were over. You got it? He was a player. He was a street guy. It's hard to take someone like that and say, okay, you've signed a cooperation agreement, now go out there and work in an office, you know, filing paper. It's, you know, just not in his blood. Manny Shupayev says being an FBI informant had nothing to do with his life of luxury and fast cars, that he would have been better off serving his time in prison. I don't think I got a better end of the deal. You know, being the situation reversed, I would have took my chances. I would have probably got convicted, but I would have probably served my time and not lived the life that I'm living now. Why do you call it that? Why do I call it what? Why is your life so objectionable to you? The, 
One reason, me and you are sitting here talking. That's one reason.